my besties welcome back to my channel or hi my name is stacy if you're new here so today's video is gonna be fun we're kind of switching it up on my channel and we're gonna rank my pat mcgrath mothership palettes from least to most favorite i've never actually done a ranking video on my channel before but i did get some requests for this and i feel like it might be helpful for anyone who's looking into getting their first mothership palette or just adding another one to their collection because these are kind of like speed reviews i guess so if you want to see my ranking then just keep on watching also disclaimer is that i don't own all of the pat mcgrath motherships i own six out of the ten so that's majority i guess so i guess you could say the ones i don't own are ranking below these six since I didn't end up buying them but I do have my eyes on subversive though that's the only one that like I don't have but I've been looking at but the other ones you can just assume that they rank lower than these ones also I'm only ranking the motherships because I feel like it doesn't make sense to compare like other size palettes against the motherships so yeah we're keeping the ranking fair but if you want to see me rank the other Pat McGrath palettes that are like quads and six pans then comment down below because maybe I'll do that in the future so before we get into it don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you want to see more content like this because it really helps on my channel and it would really mean a lot to me and let's just get right into the video Okay, so in sixth place, this actually might surprise a lot of people, but we have Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction. So don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful palette, but she's ranking in last place, aka six, just because she's very warm for my tastes especially these days and i'm just not a warm tone gal these days okay this was actually my first mothership palette so it does have a special place in my heart but i actually reach for it the least and i honestly think it's just because of the specific shades i mean this is a gorgeous bronzy tone palette with different pops of color and i think it's really pretty actually for the holidays because you have the red green and gold so it strikes me as like a super festive palette but besides that for every day i just don't really think to reach for these shades like the shade i reach for the most would be this one called rose gold 005 but yeah i think it's just because like this neutral side of the palette is just kind of boring warm neutrals it is quite useful though but i just like don't think to reach for those because usually my attention is on the special shades but for the special shades besides this pinky bronze these two are very like yellow gold and green and i haven't been reaching for green a lot lately in terms of colorful shadows that's why she hasn't been getting that much use and then i pretty much never use the color red so that one's just kind of like a dud to me personally also this shadow i don't know if it's because it's the oldest palette in my collection but this one kind of gets hard pan so it's a bit more sheer than like her other regular metallic shades and it's not like a special shade either it just has like a kind of weird hard texture or it's kind of like see it's not super like pigmented and let me like build it up again see this is the second layer so that's like not really usual for pat mcgrath I can definitely still use it, but it's just like, it has hard pan or something. So anyways, that's why this one ranks the lowest, mostly because it's like warm tones and then I don't reach for red or green these days, which would be like some of the main reasons to reach for these. Okay, next up in fifth place, we have Mothership One Subliminal. So this is kind of funny because this is the first Mothership palette, but it was the last palette to enter my collection so far. So yeah, I know I'm kind of behind on this one. So the reason why this one is ranking higher is you guessed it, cause it's cool toned. I definitely recommend this palette to any of those cool tone lovers out there, but it is ranking on the lower side just because I haven't used it as much as the palettes that are ranking higher and also because there are a couple shades like this blue for example that I pretty much almost never use so yeah that kind of knocks it down a little bit but besides that I really really like this palette despite its short amount of time in my collection and it's kind of shocking I know that it outranks bronze seduction but anyway something I particularly like about this one is that the transition shades are a bit lighter specifically this one called ultimate taupe so this is obviously a me issue considering I have like a fair complexion a lot of the Pat McGrath palettes their transition shades and mattes run really really deep on me and I can still use them but I just have to use like a really really light hand like dip my brush in once and you're good to go so I really appreciate it when she adds like a lighter shade like this because this is more my kind of transition shade obviously this is going to depend on your skin tone but for me this is a much better transition shade and then the other thing I love about this palette is these two special shades right here I definitely think to reach for these for those more ethereal type looks and especially because blue eyeshadow has been trending these days I've been reaching for blue eyeshadow if I'm going for a cool toned colorful look like I'm kind of in my blue eyeshadow phase right now now. especially because these are the astral special shades they're more kind of like duochrome ethereal type glitters which i find easier to pull off than like a blue matte for example and you guys know i love those like fairy type shades so these two vr violet and astral white are definitely perfect for that kind of look so yeah i definitely recommend this palette if you love cool tones if you love the color blue and if you like the more like ethereal mermaid fairy like shades because these two will give that to you and then you have your like more natural everyday cool tones so yeah i can't wait to play with this palette even more okay next up coming in fourth place place is Mothership 8 Divine Rose 2. So if you've been watching my channel, you know that I love pinky tones. Like for me, pink is another neutral. So anything pink is very much in my comfort zone. I prefer wearing pink colors to brown. I just think it looks better on me. So yeah, these pinky rosy shades are definitely right up my alley. Now it's not my favorite palette because again, it is definitely on the warm side. It's warmer than a lot of my top ranking ones. So that's why it's kind of falling in the middle here. But I actually really 
really, really love this shade in particular. This is the shade Astral Pink Moon. So this is the most gorgeous champagne-y pink toned glitter topper. And I actually remember to reach for this a ton for a lot of different looks because it just goes with a lot of the types of looks that I like. This Astral Pink Moon shade is so pretty because it kind of just looks like a boring champagne in the pan, but it definitely has almost like a duochrome effect with like the iridescent pink glitters scattered throughout. But like the pink glitters are noticeable, at least in person. So yeah, this is just like the most magical, ethereal, like champagne type of glitter that still has that pink twist to it. I just think it's so gorgeous. And obviously it's super wearable for any look. I usually add this to like the inner corner or the egosal, which is like the under eye fat, or sometimes in the center of the lid. And another one of my favorite Pat McGrath shades is this one called Eleganza. And this is just the most beautiful, like rosy metallic mauve. You guys know I love these like mauve tone shades. So yeah, this is like one of my favorite Pat McGrath shades as well. So the fact that this contains like a few of my favorite Pat McGrath shades of all time, definitely lands it in the solid fourth place. The only things that kind of knock this one down a bit are that I don't really use these two shades they're because they're super, super warm. These are Goldless 001 and Bronze Rosé 005. Like, these two aren't really my cup of tea. And then this Trio Chrome pinky green shade is really interesting, but also like not super wearable for every day or even like when I go for colorful looks. So yeah, those are the things that are kind of making it not land the best. But if you like rosy tones, if you like a bit of punch to your makeup, like you're not afraid of like brighter pinks and brighter like warm tones, then I think you'll really like this palette. I like that it's still pretty neutral, but it has like these pops of color. Like I honestly think this palette is kind of underrated in the Pat McGrath world. But obviously that's probably due to people's personal like color preferences. But yeah, so that's number four. Next up in third place, we have Mothership 7 Divine Rose 1. So this one is beating out Divine Rose 2 just by one ranking. And I guess that's not super surprising since they are like sister palettes. I mean, this one had to be in my top three. It's definitely one of my most used Pat McGrath palettes of all time. I love that it's on the cooler side and I love mauves. It's definitely one of my favorite shades to wear. So this just hits all those boxes for me. But then there are a couple like warmer tones like this peachy shade, VR Rose Venus, and this gold called Refined Gold 002. But yeah, this is the most neutral out of all the Pat McGrath palettes, I would say. So if you want like one that's the most wearable for every day, I feel like I would go with Divine Rose 1, especially because these palettes are so expensive. I think it makes the most sense to get the one that you would wear the most. So I feel like this checks that box for a lot of people. And then I can't talk about this palette without talking about this shade called Astral Solstice. So this is one of the most beautiful, wet looking diamond-like glitter toppers to ever exist. I really cherish this shade in my collection. It's also obviously super versatile since it is this more champagne-y white shade. You can just add this on top of literally any eye look and it will amp up the glitter and make it look wet. This shade was also in Midnight Sun and this was my most wanted shade from Midnight Sun. So that's why I'm really glad that this was in Divine Rose 1. So I don't have to get Midnight Sun because I don't really like the other shades in there. And then we also have some other beautiful shades like this Rose Dusk shade is so pretty. It's like a satin shade. I like that it acts as a matte, but it adds this like sheen to your eyelids. And then I love the shade of Valoria. I like that it's cool tone and it is lighter than a lot of the other Pat McGrath transition shades. And this lovely shade is a beautiful metallic. It's also that like taupey mauve kind of color, which I love. If you like those more mauve cool tone shades, I think you'll really like this palette. The main thing I will say though, is I think that a lot of these shades appear a little bit deeper on the skin and some of them do like pull a little bit gray, like especially Valoria. I feel like it pulls a little bit more gray and smoky on the eyes. So that's kind of the reason why this one only ranks at third place because some of the shades are a little bit too like muted and grayish on my skin. I think I suit light tones better. So tones that have a little bit more of like a pastelness to them because sometimes I feel like really gray shades kind of make me look a little bit older or like Tired. So yeah, definitely re only recommend if you like those cool tones. But overall, this is the most like user-friendly wearable palette. So that's why it ranks in third place. Okay, now we're on to the final two. So make your guesses right now. In second place, we have Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction. This one definitely crept up on me because I didn't actually expect to like this one as much as I do. I feel like especially when you first look at it, it's not like the most cohesive palette to look at, but it actually makes a lot of sense. And I really like the composition of this. The main thing is that you have your neutrals and then you also have these pops of color. So if you think like that, it makes a lot more sense. I think the main reason why I like this palette so much is actually for these special shades. These are so pretty. And I guess I like that they are more on the frosty side. So I really like Astral Gold Lust, Astral Lilac Aura and Blitz Venus. And you see how you have like your gold Gold shade, your more silvery lavender shade, and then this rose quartz kind of shade, which are like three main color groups that I use. And I like that these shades are like a lot lighter. A lot of Pat McGrath's special shades or metallics sometimes run quite deep or just like more saturated and vibrant but these ones are more on the frosty side, which I actually prefer. And then I mean, this duochrome called VR Sextasy is beautiful, but it's obviously not the most everyday friendly. I do think it is one of the prettiest like blue brown shifts I've seen. This is a very popular duochrome shade, but I actually think Pat McGrath did it the best, which we shouldn't be surprised because
because this palette was pricey. I like that you can have your more like rosy tone moment with Blitz Venus and Plum Cabaret, or you can go a more warm tone route with Rosewood Romantique, Bronze Devotion, and Astral Gold Lust. And then you could go like full cool tone silvery if you want with Platinum Dusk and Astral Lilac Aura. So there's actually a lot of different ways you can go with the colors in this palette. So I feel like there's more variety in looks compared to Divine Rose 1 and 2. But then these looks I feel like are still more wearable than a lot of the other Pat McGrath motherships. So it is a relatively newer palette, but it has become one of my most used. And I feel like it's also one of the ones where I like the most of the shades in it. And I feel like it's also pretty rare for me to like oh, pretty much all of the shades in the palette and feel like I could use them relatively regularly. So that's why this one's at number two. Okay, and now for first place, make your guesses. If you've been watching me, you probably have an idea. So my first place ranking goes to Mothership 9 Utopian Dream. So this palette. This palette is my baby and it's definitely my most reach for Mothership out of all of them, but honestly mostly because of these two shades at the end right here. So this is Astral Amethyst Moon and this is Astral Venusian Orchid. I kind of had a little bit of an Easter egg going on throughout this video, which is that I actually used Astral Venusian Orchid as my glitter topper today. It's the main glitter shade that you see on my eyes and yeah, she's stunning, as we all know. So if you were familiar enough with the palettes and with my tastes, I think you could have guessed. But yeah, that's why she's here at the number one spot. So is this the most everyday friendly palette? Not necessarily, depending on your preferences. For me, this is just the most ethereal, fairy princess palette that Pat McGrath has come out with so far. I mean, these two shades are literally like ethereal heaven. And they're also kind of duochrome -y, so like Astral Venusian Orchid is like a pink to green shift, and then Astral Amethyst Moon is that kind of like reddish violet to blue shift. I mean, could you ask for any more perfect like mermaidy unicorn type vibes? And also like the rest of the palette too is like this nice rosy toned palette. You guys know I love those. So I would recommend this for people who like more ethereal looks, who prefer neutrals, but like maybe like to step out of their comfort zone and play with a little bit of color every now and then. Prefer like some brighter pops that are grounded kind of in neutral colors, because like this. This whole section of the palette is pretty warm toned rosy neutrals and then you add like these few pops of color that like really bring the fun, the energy, the vibrancy to your look. And I think for me it's just like I just reach for these two shades like non-stop whenever I want an ethereal eye look. These are the two I go for, they're like at the top of my head, but I do think the rest of the palette is gorgeous as well. It's just not as loved as these two shades for me. I also think that there aren't too many shades that are like difficult to work with in terms of the color story. I feel like most of the tones go pretty well with each other. You won't be racking your brain trying to figure out how to come up with looks. I mean, minus like this shade, I guess, it's a little bit out of the blue, but they just all go really well together. I think it's a great palette for like spring and summer because it is a more vibrant, fun palette. And I'm definitely like a spring color kind of gal. I don't really know what else there is to say besides that this palette is like my favorite Pat McGrath palette of all time. Hopefully Pat McGrath comes out with more shades like this one. I just love her ethereal type shades. Like if she did a pastel palette, I would be done for. So anyways, that wraps up today's video. I hope you found this video ranking helpful and hope that answers some of your questions about which palettes are my favorite. Let me know what your ranking is if you have one, I would love to know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and comment and subscribe down below if you want to see more content like this because it really helps on my channel and it would really mean a lot to me and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!